Well, I came from a family uh, essentially where music was religion and Schubert was God. I'm a cellist, a uh, musician and a music educator and Fred and I met a number of years ago. He came up to me one day and said, I'd like to build something of cultural value up in Bosque, New Hampshire. Do you have any ideas? I knew that there was no retreat for performing musicians. I'm a failed violinist, so my history is significantly different. The appeal of music and the appeal of turning the farm into something that was a permanent fixture uh, in my life and a collective life, as it were, in creating a community was very appealing and very important. We met for the first time in 2011, in August of 2011, and this is now our fourth season. So it all happened very quickly. It did. We opened in August of 2013. We uh, were concerned as to whether we would throw a party, people would come. <laughs> right. They did come, they were enthusiastic, and we were buoyed. In the long run, I think what's really amazing about this place is the impact it has on the entire musical and artistic community. As we come here and hone our skills and talents, we become better musicians and we become better artists and we go out there and we become, we're better at transforming the world through our arts. So really this place is a place that provides that op opportunity. Avalok, by the way, is the uh, Celtic term for apple. It had magical connotations. But um, when I bought the farm, literally, in 1995, uh, there were over 3,000 apple trees here, and it was a working orchard. That's what we have, clover, yeah. blueberries, apple, corn, and music. Really the overarching feeling is that you're here to do your own work, to be creative, and we're not going to stand over you and check boxes to see if you're doing what you said you would do. Um, and it's been clear, al almost every single person who's been here has said to me, never had a place where I got so much accomplished and felt so relaxed and comfortable. We, ha we run the gamut from medieval vocal ensembles to the most avant-garde contemporary groups and everything in between. And that has been, for me personally, absolutely thrilling. Uh, they love the studios, they love the uh, living quarters. The lake. And the lake and, and, and just the, the pristine setting of a quiet place. Because obviously most of them live in a urban environment where they don't have this kind of solitude and the opportunity to concentrate on their work. It's clear that musicians coming out of conservatories nowadays have to carve their own path. It's very frustrating to watch uh, such talent uh, struggling to make a living, uh, struggling to find their place in the world. It's really, it's a slog, but when you can slog joyously, it makes a huge difference. We're, we're super grateful for having that kind of setting and that kind of atmosphere. We love it when we're here, and I think we crave it and miss it when we're gone. Mm. And I like to think that we make their lives easier, uh, that somehow by giving them the support, uh, we're helping them to feel like what they're doing, creating this art uh, in, in society, is getting some really, real substantive support from us. <laughs>